Hello, in today's video I want to talk about the strategical deployment and transport of main battle tanks via rail. I saw a video on Twitter about T-62 tanks being deployed to Ukraine. Under the video were multiple discussions and comments about missing trains to fix the tanks. That brought up the idea that I could create a video talking about this topic, how to fix tanks on the railway car and why the Russians didn't use trains on their this video is more focused on continental Europe and its guidelines of transporting military goods on rail, but at the end I will go into detail about this T-62 transport and the Russian way of doing it. Things said in this video do not only count for main battle tanks, but also for armored recovery vehicles, self-propelled howitzers and other similar vehicles. Tanks and other track vehicles aren't built or suited to drive on their own tracks to the deployment combat area. They would cause damage to the infrastructure, like roundabouts, bridges, roads, but also damage to their tracks, to their wheels, to the suspension, because of the long distance, long time of driving on paved roads. Also, driving on roads requires some work to be done. Bridges need to be checked if they are built uh, for the weight of the MBT, Many bridges, especially in Eastern Europe, aren't built for Western MBTs, but rather for lighter 40 ton Soviet tanks. Heavy Leopards and Abrams would cause damage to smaller bridges there. The cheapest way to transport multiple armored vehicles to a certain location is by rail transport. A tank loaded on a train in France could drive all the way to Turkey or Poland without the need of switching the wagons. Only Spain and the former Soviet Union, like Ukraine, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, the wagons need to be switched since there is a different coach for railways. That would be interesting if Spain plans to send some Leopards to Ukraine. They would have to be reloaded at the border to France, and then again in Poland on the border to Ukraine. Since Spain, majority of European Union and Ukraine used three different gauges. That was also an important point during World War II. German trains with their transports weren't able to drive on Soviet tracks because of the different dimensions. The maximum size for where you can still transport vehicles on rail is 3 meter 70 width. Here are some examples. Leopard 2 has a width of 3.7 meters. M1 Abrams has a width of 3.66 meters. M60 Patton has 3.6 meter, Leclerc has 3.7 meters, T72 has 3.6 meters, Chieftain has 3.66 meters, Ariete has 3.6 meters, and now more interesting, Tiger 1 has 3.7 meters. Here you can see that over the last 80 years nothing really changed. Tanks have to be developed with this maximum width in mind so they can still be deployed to Europe. While we saw during the last two decades that more and more tanks received add-on armor to the sides, here it's important to mention that this add-on armor is removable or foldable, like it is with Leopard 2. So the 3.7 meters won't get violated. You can see on Leopard 2 how the heavy add-on armor gets folded downwards into the suspension area, otherwise it would be too wide for transport. Now comes the second major impact, the weight. Not every freight wagon can take a 70 ton MBT, and not even all freight wagons are made to transport military goods, but many are. Normally a tank or a tank platoon doesn't travel alone. Often there are wheeled vehicles like boxers or TPZ Fuchs in German, or smaller vehicles that are tracked like the YPR for the Dutch, that are used for command, for supply, or even as um, reconnaissance or any other task you can think about. They normally get loaded on smaller wagons. Here is important that on these smaller wagons the MBT never drives onto it, because they are not made to withstand 70 tons or 60 tons of MBT. So the train has to be sorted so the light vehicles drive only on the small cars and the MBTs drive on the heavy ones. Normally first the light vehicles get loaded onto the train 
and then on the heavy wagons the heavy tanks also it's possible to separately load them and rearrange the wagons at the end here comes also into mind that the last vehicle that gets loaded onto the train and the first vehicle to be unloaded is normally the armored recovery vehicle so in case any vehicle has problems with the engine transmission or the otherwise the armored recovery vehicle can remove the vehicles from the freight wagon tanks can be loaded and unloaded with static concrete ramps that are present in all over europe or with mobile ramps that can be brought and built by logistical units for unloading it's also possible to create makeshift ramps from wood or just turn the turret to the side and jump off the car Turning the barrel sideways prevents the barrel from hitting either the dirt on 12 o'clock position or the freight wagon on 6 o'clock position. While jumping down the train wagon can get damaged, that's why it doesn't uh, get trained or done while peacetime. It's only suited for wartime and emergency situations. To prepare this all, it's important to bring the right wagons that are capable of transporting these desired vehicles. Wagons have to be equipped with supports that prevent the flat car from derailing when the MPT drives onto it. Supports have to be lowered and the ramps between the freight cars have to be folded down so the vehicles can drive through up to the last wagon. Since MPTs are wider than the flat car itself, it's important to make sure that it's standing perfectly in the middle by checking both sides with a ruler. This is done while the tank is still driving on the final flat car. If the tank is standing in its position, it's important to prevent it from moving while the transport. Here in Europe we decide uh, between two possibilities of securing armored vehicles and vehicles in general on trains. But it's sometimes possible to see both variants done at the same time. Let's take a quick look into the UEC loading guidelines that regulate rail transport of cargo in general in Europe. Point 563. Vehicles and machinery on wheels or caterpillar tracks Vehicles and machinery should be loaded lengthwise in the wagon, immobilized with the handbrake and with the first gear engaged, or the gears blocked. Secured against movements either using scotches or direct fastening. That means chains that are always used in USA aren't needed for railroad transport in Europe. Scotches are enough if the vehicle has a working parking brake. For this there are scotches in front and in the back of the tank, preventing the tank from moving either forward or backwards. To prevent a sideways movement, there are additional scotches under the track that go to the inside of the tank. Those you normally can't see while the train passes you, but here you can see them. I have pictures and a small video. As other option, or rather a more modern solution to replace the chains, countries like the Netherlands are using tension straps to fix the vehicles to the wagon. This is easier to carry, to put on and to remove than heavy old chains. There are also different ways of transporting the crew and the personnel of the vehicles. For example, we commonly use buses or cars of the units itself to travel on normal roads to the destination of the train, but also it's possible to use a modified passenger car. Same goes for the Russians. We also saw a lot of passenger cars and sleeping cars while the deployment during the January and February, but also we saw still box cars using for transporting people. That is not uh, anymore done in Europe. But now we come to the beginning of the video. How does Russian fix their tanks? It doesn't look like they are using scotches, also there are no chains visible. One Twitter user found something interesting in the video, he even marked it on a screenshot. Russians are using loading spurs. Those are pretty special way of fixing a tank. They have to be bolted onto the track of the tank. For this the tank drives on the flat car. The tank crew marks the track pieces under the second and fifth road wheel on the T72 and T90 or the second and the fourth road wheel for the T62. Now the tank drives forward until the track piece marked onto the fourth or fifth road wheel is open and going up towards the sprocket. The tank crew now fix the loading spore on this track piece. After done the tank drives backwards until the track piece marked under the second wheel is open. 
Now there's also a spore mounted. After doing so, the tank drives back into the right position. Important here is that the loading spores are not allowed to come into the idler or into the sprocket. Otherwise, the loading spores can get damaged. I can't think of any benefit from using this instead of straps, chains or scotches. Russia has scotches and chains for military transport, but yet still uses this old system from the Cold War. It requires more movement on the freight car, it makes more damage to the wood on the freight car and it prevents the tank from directly driving off the flat car. It takes significantly longer to load and unload the tank compared to other solutions. But now you can see the Russians are securing the tanks even if it doesn't look so. If you keep this in mind and when you look at Russian tanks on trains and you especially look onto the second road wheel and the fourth or fifth road wheel depending on the type of tank you can see the loading spurs. Thank you for watching my video. I would be happy if you comment or subscribe. See you in the next video.